use this one? Okay. I might walk yeah. out, so that's, that's cool. Good. That's cool. Thank you so much for having me in today. I, uh, I'm lucky enough to kind of fit in with our whole Roots theme. I uh, have a lot of connections with Roots in general. So Clara, who is a good friend of mine, kind of gave us permission to be here today, which I thought was kind of ironic since I was friends with her. And we have the Root theme that they mentioned earlier. So soon as uh, also my friend Lauren asked me about speaking here. She was looking at the next couple months and when I could possibly speak and I looked at the menu essentially they gave and it had roots on the first month of January, which I think is perfect for everybody to kind of dig in to where you're at in the new year, find your roots again. I think everybody takes that opportunity to, to sit down at the beginning of the year and try to find where they were, where they want to be, you know, and kind of reflect on that. So. I think that opportunity is perfect and now that we're here, we're going to also talk about how roots are, is our breath, okay? So roots for a tree, as you see on the first picture that they had up on the screen, are our ability to dig into the ground. Our bodies are not attached to the ground, thankfully. We can move, right? So. Our breath is our root to the world. Oxygen is what allows us to live. Okay? We can do without water, we can do without nutrients, we can probably do without coffee, it's debatable, but, uh, but uh, we use oxygen to ground ourselves into the world. Okay? So as you can kind of see even in that initial picture, we have what looks like roots in our lungs. Okay? So. What we're gonna do is kind of talk about how those roots, how your breath can ground you in your day-to-day -day life, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a minute to breathe initially, okay? All of you have had some great food, nutritious food, and a lot of times, we inhale that really quickly, like some of you might have done this morning because we're like gonna do a talk, so everybody shoves their food in their mouth really quick. But what we wanna do is allow our body to prepare for the food. So since you just ate, we're probably a smidge late on that, but hopefully we can still see some of the benefits from that. So I want you all to take a second, okay, to think about where your breath is happening right now, okay? We're gonna jump back and forth a lot. We're gonna do a couple of different breathing drills today, okay? So take a second. You may need your hands potentially too to almost feel where the air is going, okay? If you wanna close your eyes, you're welcome to, but hands can go somewhere between belly, chest, and even on the side of your hip, okay? So I want you to think about when you take an inhale, where does that air go? Is it moving up? Is it moving out? Is it moving forward? Where are you feeling some of that air happening? Okay. There is a particular area that that air should be moving. Okay. So we have two types of breathing in the way I like to describe it to people. We have our automatic breath which is kind of in your subconscious, right? You can breathe without having to think about breathing all day, which is a great thing, okay? If you had to think all day, every day about breathing, you wouldn't be able to think about much else, okay? So that is driven through our subconscious. So when our subconscious is constantly under stress, Okay? That subconscious breathing pattern can tend to change on you. Okay? It moves more into this stress inhale, like if you have a lot of things to do, you're going to go into your neck and shoulders because you're trying to regulate that a little bit. Okay? So if you can bring your breath into your neck, you can also have a conscious breathing pattern. Okay. So unlike your heart rate, you can't decide I'm going to slow my heart rate down or I'm going to pick up my heart rate or I'm going to slow it down or I'm going to pick it up and, and change those things. 
but you can certainly change your breath pattern pretty much at any given moment. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to play around real quick with changing those things so that you can get a little bit of feel for that. Okay? So what I want you to do, we'll kind of do this together for a second, is we're going to think about inhaling for a four count. You're going to pause for a four count. You're going to exhale for four, and you're going to pause again for four. So we've got four corners of that, and you're going to inhale for four. So we'll kind of inhale four, three, two, one, and then hold that for four, three, two, one. You're going to exhale for four, three, two, one, hold, four, Three, two, one. Okay. So you just took a 16 second breath cycle. Okay. Did that feel hard for anybody to hold for those four seconds? Is it rude? Oh yeah. You're always stressed. <laughs> so, so you can stretch your breath cycle. That's called box breathing, right? So you can stretch your breath cycle out to learn to control those things. Okay. So when we have some anxiety or anxiousness, we feel like we can't get enough air in a lot of times. You're like, <laughs> you're trying to constantly bring more air in. So what we want to be able to do is stop and regulate and create what would be like a box breathing pattern to try to kind of bring our nervous system back down. Okay. So that especially is something that you can do anytime during the day for lunch. You know, if you have somebody breathing down the back of your neck to get a project done, you want to slow those breaths down, okay? Because we are in control of our breath, okay? It is the most vital thing that you have on a day-to-day -day basis. Again, we can go without food or water for extended periods of time, but couple minutes without air and you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Okay, so our breath is our connection and our root to this planet Earth. It's not the ground with the tree's roots, but it is the air that is all around us. Okay, it seems so given and comfortable to us that we just breathe, but if somebody started to restrict the oxygen in this room, everybody would know it really fast. Okay, and then you can probably tell when you change altitudes and stuff like that too, that everything feels a little bit differently at that point. So we're going to do a quick talk on how the structure and anatomy can play into that as well. Okay, so with this slide, as you kind of see on the left, the, the yellow arrows are the more optimal position for our bodies. Okay, we're not necessarily meant to sit all day, every day. It's not really part of our uh, human anatomy to be always on our butt, um, but that's kind of where we're at at this point. So when you're looking at these couple lines, we have up here would be our diaphragm. Okay, so this little dome here is our diaphragm. That is what helps us bring air in to fill our lungs, okay? It drops down. And our lungs, which are up here, are gonna fill with air, okay? So when that fills, it kind of turns into an inverted position. So it drops down, okay? Your pelvic floor, hopefully you all have one of those that works, okay? If anybody's been pregnant in the room, then you probably know that if you sneeze, when you have something else in this area, a oh baby that you may leak a little bit out the bottom, okay? You've lost your ability to maintain this cylinder piece, okay? Because the baby's taken up the space and it shoves the diaphragm up and in, okay? So when that gets shoved up and in, you lose the ability to pressurize the system. You sneeze, that's high pressure. Your body can't handle it, okay? So, we, and that actually is pretty much this picture here, okay? This and this need to be facing each other, okay? So pelvic diaphragm and thoracic diaphragm need to be stacked, okay? 
So this is our optimal position for breathing, okay? So if you're trying to breathe here, or if you have a baby and you're trying to breathe here, those can be really challenging positions. The reason I bring this up is you need to be able to bring in enough air to fill your entire lungs, okay? You also need to bring in air to support your body, okay? The air that is filling you up is also what is stabilizing your body, okay? That, that piece of the puzzle tends to be missing for a lot of strength conditioning and rehab and everything, but, but really there's three main pieces to our breathing system. We have our state, so we can change our state with breathing. That's been a lot around for a long time, okay? You have yoga, you have meditation, you have all these things that allows you to change your mental state. You move and, you, and then you do those things and you feel better, right? Has, that, has anybody done yoga in here before? Okay. Do you feel different after you do yoga than you do before you do yoga? Yeah, right? Like, duh. But, but that's the ability to use your breath to change your state, okay? So once you change your state, okay, you can also use your breath to change your mechanics, okay? Uh, a couple of you in here have worked with me before, and what happens is our breath drives us into different positions. If you inhale in a way that is a stress position, you inhale and you go, and you tend to arch your back, okay? So that is going to limit our spine's ability to go the other direction, okay? So we can actually change our aches, our pains, our neck tension, our back tension, our hip tension, by how you are breathing in on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? So that is what would be more of the mechanics or the biomechanics of your breathing. And as you can see here, does this person's neck look as nice as this person's neck? Okay. If you have chronic neck tension, your breath that you do 20,000 times a day can be driving that picture all the way on your right. Okay. It makes your neck not feel good. It makes your back not feel good. And eventually things just start to give off these constant pain signals because 20,000 breaths a day are creaking up your neck like this. Okay. So we have our state, we have our mechanics that we can change, and then we have our physiology, okay? If you hold your breath, eventually your brain, you have a little CO2 sensor, a carbon dioxide sensor, that's gonna tell you you need to breathe. If somebody holds you underwater, eventually you're gonna be like, all right, I need out of there, okay? Some of you are probably better at holding your breath than others, okay? But we need oxygen in our cells to live, okay? If you're doing something that takes a lot of energy, you're walking, you're running, you need to be able to take a nice deep breath in to get the oxygen to your muscles so you can continue going. Otherwise, you have a tendency to need to stop quicker. So if you don't breathe efficiently, you get out of breath faster. Okay, so walking up the stairs might seem hard. Or you know, taking a run that used to be easy now feels hard. So we need the ability to be efficient at bringing in oxygen, and it changes a lot of other chemicals too that we're not having a total science class. I just wanna kinda of give you guys an idea of how your breath can change state, it can change physiology, and it can change your mechanics and structure of your body. So it, it's a huge part of what I do on an everyday basis. This is what I get, I get to have fun and play with ribs and talk about breathing and, and help people realize that their bodies can feel a ton better if they just learn to breathe more efficiently. Everybody's always like, I know how to breathe. I do it all day, every day. Stop telling me I don't know how to breathe. I'm like, but that's the respiration versus conscious breathing, okay? One part of it's subconscious, one part of it's conscious. So if you allow yourself to pay attention to where the air is going, then you start to feel if you're taking little tiny neck and shoulder breaths all day, every day. 
So now that I kind of went over that a little bit, I want you to, if your hands are free, to kind of actually do a little more feeling. So I like to take kind of on both sides here. That's kind of my favorite spot. It's just above your hip bones, okay? When you inhale through your nose, please, you should feel those hands moving apart from each other. Okay, so we're talking like east and west breathing. I feel like I'm loud enough that if I move the mic away, I'll be okay still, but I'll try to keep bringing it back. So inhale for me and see if you can make your hands widen east and west. Okay, anybody struggling with that concept? Yeah, I got some funny eyebrow, eyebrows looking at me now. So that, okay, is when your diaphragm drops, it is displacing your guts. That is not your lungs, I promise you. Okay, I don't think, I have had a client that has their organs in the opposite side. Um, so his heart was over here and everything was kind of flipped and twisted, but chances are you guys are all in the right place. Um, but you need to be able to feel that your guts essentially being pushed down and out by your diaphragm. If you're not getting air down there, you're probably taking little breaths up into your neck and shoulders all day, every day. You're 20,000 of them, at least, give or take a couple thousand. So that's a lot, okay? It puts a lot of tension in your traps. If you did 20,000 bicep curls a day, would you be like, you've lost your mind, right? Your bicep would hurt so much if you did that every day. But we're taking little shoulder shrugs 20,000 times, okay? So a good way to start to feel for that is practicing being able to feel that air being displaced by your intestines outwards to the sides, okay? If you tend to get a lot of tension here, it's the same thing, okay? If you're like this when you breathe, you're turning on all of these muscles all the time. Give your back a break, find the back of your chairs, and press your spine slightly into the chair, and inhale there, okay? your lungs should expand forward and backward as well. Okay, if they're right here, okay, they open both ways. And then this goes out. So start to stop and check in on yourself. If you feel back tension, okay, neck tension, try to breathe some air into that space and then down through here to stop dragging it up into your neck and shoulders there, okay? So I wanted to make sure we kind of start to feel what that's like. Okay, if you need more help, you know, shoot me an email, whatever we can do, but you need to be able to feel the air moving here first. Okay, lungs fill from the bottom up, hopefully. So the air should start bottom up. It's called apical breathing. If the first place you breathe is up into your chest and shoulders. So we want to find air in the bottom. Okay, everybody make, does that make sense to everybody? Is everybody kind of understanding the feeling of, it might not be easy right now to feel that, but the idea is the air needs to go down. I don't love breath, belly breathing as a term because it just means you do that, okay? What did we talk about in that first picture? That we don't want to go into that belly out position, okay? Because it's gonna throw off our ability to organize ourselves. Okay, so 360 breathing is kind of the term we like to use all the way around our body. Okay, go to the next slide. Okay, so we kind of started to pay attention to how we breathe, where we breathe, how we improve, okay? So that is the mechanical side of things, okay? There's also the whole idea of the state and the physiology that we didn't touch on a ton, but if you want to change your state, okay? You want to stop and slow your breath down, okay? If you want to ramp up your state, you breathe faster, okay? So you can do faster breathing drills to kind of wake yourself up. You can slow your breathing down. And then, then let's talk about like times of the day. Like in the morning, if you want coffee, but maybe you can't have coffee. You can actually use your breath to get that same hit of energy as you would from drinking coffee. It's not quite the same physiology, but 
it can give you that same euphoric kind of feeling, just like if you jump in a cold shower in the morning, okay? If you got a cold shower, you're gonna get woken up really quick compared to if you take a nice, warm, relaxing shower, okay? So mornings, okay, we can breathe a little faster. Lunchtime, a lot of you are creative, so maybe a larger portion of this group doesn't actually have a boss, um, but for those of you that do, if they're harping at you and you're stressed at work, you're in what we would call like fight or flight or freeze mode. Okay, so when you're at work, okay, or when you're stressed or maybe you're crossing the street and you're about to get hit by a car, you feel that tension and stress. Yeah, I know, a little extreme. I always use like a dinosaur, uh, like you're being chased by a dinosaur because everybody can imagine how scary that would be, like if you've watched Jurassic Park or something like that. But, but your nervous system is ramped up. Right? So, if your nervous system is ramped up while you're at work and you're about to eat lunch really quickly, okay, does anybody ever kind of feel a little bit bloated or stuffy after lunch? Like, just like at like lunchtime, like, ugh, I just, whatever I ate just didn't feel good. It may have nothing to do with what you ate. It may have been that you are still, we have like this sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. One's fight or flight or freeze, the other is rest and digest, okay, relax, okay? So if you're in fight or flight when you're eating, do you think your digestive system is able to work properly? No, because that fits into rest and digest mode, okay? And then all the way at the other end of the spectrum, you have fight or flight, okay? If work feels like fight or flight mode, then you're not gonna produce the digestive enzymes and acids you need to actually digest your food, okay? So you need to learn how to shift gears, okay? We use gears a lot in breathing, like the idea of shifting a gear. Nobody has cars that are manual that shift hardly anymore, so that's, you know, almost irrelevant at this point. But some of you have probably driven a car that has stick. So you're shifting gears up and down. One's faster, one's slower, right? Or neutral, where you're not going anywhere. So, you can use your breath to shift gears from sympathetic to parasympathetic and back and forth. So if you're about to eat lunch and you're in fight or flight mode and you're always bloated after lunch, why don't we shift gears and down regulate so that we can move into rest and digest mode for a few minutes, okay? So you use that slow, relaxed breath cycle, okay, longer, slower breaths, and your brain, your vagus nerve is connects through your diaphragm, okay? It tells your brain whether you should be ramped up or toned down, okay? This way you feel your heart rate increase when you're stressed, you breathe more, you get a little sweat going, that's fight or flight. If you use your breath to slow everything down, you put yourself in rest and digest, slow your heart rate, digestive enzymes pick up. You may even hear, it happens to me every time I work with somebody. They lay on the table for two minutes, and their stomach starts gurgling. They're like, why is my stomach making noise? Every day it happens. And it's because for the first time probably that day, they stopped and laid down for a second, took a couple breaths. And all of a sudden their digestive system's like, hey, we haven't ate for a couple hours. They didn't even register that they were hungry or hadn't eaten, but because they took a couple breaths and laid down for a second, they start to feel their stomach gurgle and, and there's everything starting to happen in here, okay? But you just need to throw that in during, right before lunch ideally, if you're stressed at work. Stop, do 10 breaths, you know, four in, four pause, four out, four pause. It's been used forever with martial arts and yoga and all these different techniques to control your mind and your body, okay? We do have a lot more control than we think we do over where we're at with that, like our anxiousness, our stress. But you need a tool, hopefully, to get you there, okay? So use those breath cycles before lunch. Maybe test it out today if, if it sticks in your head long enough. Stop, take 10 breaths, and see if you can get yourself into rest and digest before you eat your lunch and see if everything just kind of goes a little smoother, you don't feel like you're bloated and upset in your stomach, it's like a brick sitting in there or something, but try to slow it down, take a couple breaths, eat your lunch, maybe in peace, or take a walk. Um, try to give yourself just a little bit of your time for your body to even function the way that it's supposed to. Okay? It, it doesn't have much of a chance if 
you know, if somebody's screaming in the background and you're stressed and you're worried about the project, you're shoveling food in your mouth, and it kind of works the same for dinner, right? We don't have turn down time very often. We run from this meeting to work, through work through lunch, eat our food at the same time, drive and eat. Women, some of you drive and put makeup on, I don't know how that, how that works. Um, but, but you're just running from one thing to the other without down regulating at all until you try to get in bed and then you can't sleep. Because you haven't turned off anything. The on switch is still on. Okay? Use that again before you try to get in bed. I try not to even get in bed until I've already done that. Lay on the floor, you know, give yourself a minute, slow the breathing cycles down. It doesn't have to be super meticulous of like how, but stop and slow down so you're on your off switch when you actually get in bed so you can sleep and rest. Because if you're not in rest and digest mode again, you're gonna feel like you wake up a bunch at night or your, your body never had time to turn off, okay? So it is a large part of our, of our ability to be able to shut things down a little bit and slow down, okay? You can't leave the on switch on 24 seven and expect it to not burn out, okay? So, next slide's good. What we got? I don't even remember what else I threw on that. I threw a bunch, I, so the last place we're at, I can barely see the screen. So I just kind of made a little tiny PowerPoint thinking like, ah, if they can't see it, I don't want it to have too much stuff on it. But now I have this monster screen behind me. So, <laughs> anyhow. Um, yeah, so just kind of a couple of things I was touching on. So another little tip for most of you is trying to remove breathing in and out through your mouth during the day, okay? Our mouths are made for eating and talking, not for breathing, okay? It's helpful for breathing when you're running and doing things, but it shouldn't be part of our regular day-to-day um, -day life. I can't not screen and look at people, so I, as I'm standing here, I see some of you with your mouth open when you're sitting here talking, you know, I'm talking, and they're like, uh, you know, like, what do I have to do today? So like, I can't not see that, because I'm just trained to watch people doing that stuff all the time. But, um, so, there's a really good book called Oxygen Advantage, if anybody's interested in learning more about all these concepts. Um, my goal really is to empower and educate people how to take care of themselves. It's not for me to sit here and smack you in the back of the head and tell you what to do all the time, okay? You guys are all adults for the most part, and you know you're responsible for your own health, okay? So you'll do what you need to do when you're tired of your own shit, you know, like, <laughs> Until that point, you're probably not going to do much about it. Or even if I tell you to do it, you're going to do it for a little bit while I'm standing there looking at you, and then you walk away, and then you go back to doing your own thing. Okay? But if you want to learn and educate yourself a little bit more, Oxygen Advantage is an amazing book. Uh, it tells you more in depth why we shouldn't be breathing through our mouth and how many problems that causes. So if you snore, your mouth's open, right? So that causes heart problems, dental problems, all the different things. Um, food, we, I wanted to throw this in because we talked about food, like if you eat a can of beans and a half gallon of milk right now instead of what you just had, are you going to feel bloated and maybe a little congested or just blah, right? Our food completely affects how we breathe and how we function during the day. Okay. So if you want to make sure that you're breathing easily without restriction and congestion, or feeling inflamed, you need to eat food that's gonna keep you from going in that direction. Um, so Rebel, Town Hall, all that stuff is so clean. They test their coffee, they test their food, they test blood sugars after to make sure that there's not negative effects to the food driving these bad patterns that we're trying to avoid in the first place. Okay? So box breathing we touched on, slow it down, Breathe nice and easy, and then think about kind of stacking and lining those positions up that we were talking about at the beginning, okay? You can't have one one way, one the other, and have what would be more of an optimal breathing pattern, okay? You can breathe, you know, you have basically have to have your mouth taped shut and nose sealed to not breathe, but you can't always do things better, okay? It's the little things that add up sleeping well, breathing well, moving, eating nutritious food. These whole lifestyle changes don't have to be complex, 
Um, it's sexy and, and cool when it's complex and advanced and we have all this cool technology we can use now. But the fundamentals are what drives your ability to function at a high level every day. If you're a creative person and work in the creative industry or work for yourself, I, I think it's kind of hard to think like, I'm performing at 50% today and it's good enough. You know, like you want to be really good at what you do probably. If you're out there doing it for yourself or out there for other people, like you want to be the best at what you do. You want to be really good. You want to succeed at your own business potentially. You know, how, you know, you're not even giving yourself a great shot if you're functioning at 50% every day. You know, you want to feel 100%. You want to give 100% for your clients and your people that are around you. And that's a lot of what drives me to make sure that like, I need to feel good every day. Because I need to be able to help take care of the people that are coming into my office. If I'm tired or groggy, like, I, just, I can't do that the same way. So you know, do it for yourself, do it for other people, whether you're internally or externally motivated by those things. Um, but it is super important to giving 100% of you and, and your body and helping allow that to function. Um, next, I don't know if there's anything else on there. Oh yeah, just another cool picture of roots and our breath. And next one, I think I just had a couple quick quotes. So, learn how to exhale and the inhale will take care of itself, okay? Exhaling requires some muscle and strength. Okay? So as you get older and older, folks tend to have a harder time breathing if you're in your 80s and 90s and have emphysema. But the air out is the ability to contract and squeeze all the air out so that you can get all new air in. Okay? If you fill a glass with water and only dump half out, how much can you put back in? Only half, right? So if you lose the ability to exhale, you lose the ability to refill your body with fresh air. Okay? Air flows openly into us, but it doesn't openly get shoved out. So that long drawn out exhale is way more important to the ability to breathe well. And then without full awareness of breathing, there can be no development of meditative stability and understanding. Okay? You need to look inside of yourself with your breath. Okay? You need that downtime. You need to look within yourself to grow, to create a support system. Think about roots, like they grow and get wider. Okay? The more you grow and breathe and think within, the deeper your roots get within yourself, and then you can outwardly support more people. Okay? If you've got a really good root system, Okay, you can take on a lot of load on the tree. Like if there was a hundred monkeys climbing on a tree, you'd be great. Like, it's fine. If you have a little tree, then one monkey's gonna pull it over, okay? So you need the ability to support other people in your life. You know, you want to be able to support people and help people, but you need deep roots to do that, okay? Use your breath to create those deeper roots within yourself and to feel good so you can support other people. And that was the last of what I had on that. Anybody has questions, thoughts, feel free to fire away. Fire away, yes. But first, 